for today's practice, you're going to need a yoga block or a pillow if you don't have a yoga block at home. Um, something that's a little more stout and sturdy and compact so it can simulate a yoga block. Or <clears throat> you can play around with the towel again to um, just have some feedback for certain poses. Today we're going to be focusing on the inner thighs and also the arches of your back. So really developing the strength of your back body, um, which can find weak points considering how much we like to sit in our culture, um, slumps, slouch, and basically have slump asana. So you're going to join me at the front of your mat. And we are going to start in Tadasana Equal Standing Mountain Pose. We're going to do so uh, with our feet equal distance apart under our sits bones. And take a nice deep breath in. And just let your bones settle wherever they would like to for the moment. And then as you take a deep breath in, see if you can find the four corners of your feet. That's big toe base, little toe base inside and outside rails of your heel. Take a deep breath in, lifting the toes up. And on your exhale, settle the toes back down. So we're gonna fan the toes again. The heels remain, the toe bases remain. Inhale, lift the toes up. And exhale, settle them back down. Let the hands reach down towards the earth. Feel your shoulders melt away from your ears. Perhaps you open up your heart a little, but keep those ribs down and connected to your core. And as you breathe, perhaps you want to close your eyes to drown out any uh, stimulation from the outside world and just feel your breath start to move. And as your big toe base, little toe base and heel edges are rooting to the earth, perhaps you start to feel the lift and buoyancy of your arch, the arch of your foot. Feel the energy come up through your legs and feel your kneecaps start to lift as energy comes up through the quads and thighs into the hips. In the equal standing mountain pose, we are steadfast and sturdy, but constantly fluid and changing. Noticing as the heels are heavy, the head can become light and floating, this balance between earth and sky. Take a deep breath in and a deep breath out. On your next inhale, allow your hands to lift up overhead. Perhaps you allow your body to open there in the front. Feel the curves of the back, the back of the neck, the back of the arch of the spine, and even into the arch of the foot. And hold here for another moment. And then exhale, bring it down, Samasthiti. Stay here for another moment with the sensations through your feet and through your legs. Finding just this equal and simple focus is sometimes very difficult to do. Notice if you're gripping in your toes at all. Taking a deep breath in and a deep breath out. On your next inhale, keeping your hands where they are, start to press your sternum or chest bone into your thumbs and feel how you start to create this curve of the low back. And then perhaps you start to tilt your chin away and feel the curve of your neck. And if you were lying on the floor, you would be like the babe who's just learning to lift their head and develop their back core strength. Bring the chin back to the chest. Bring the ribs back into the core. Take a deep breath in. And exhale, melt the hands down and away. On your next inhale, bring the hands up overhead. And feeling that same sensation of the heart pushing first, then perhaps the throat. And then on your exhale, bring your hands down through heart center, fold your body into Uttanasana, forward fold. And as you're folded here, we are drawing in the front curves, abdominals up and away from the thighs. Take a moment to pedal the knees. Let the hips kind of swish back and forth. Wiggle your toes, 
Spread your toes, put them back down. Bend to the knees about 30 degrees. Notice any changes in the arches of the foot. Exhale, press the floor away. Inhale, halfway rise. In so doing, place your hands at your hips and feel that you're trying to create the curve of the low back. And then maybe you lift your chin away from your chest and feel the curve of the cervical spine. Exhale, fold. Inhale, rise all the way up, arms overhead. Exhale, hands to heart center. Moving forward, take a deep breath in. As the hands go overhead, if you wanna add the back bend, start it first from the heart, then from the throat. Exhale, fold. Inhale, placing the hands at the waist, at the hips and the back, halfway rise. And then exhale, fold. Bend into the knees, make yourself smaller. Place your right foot back. Place your left foot back to meet it. Find yourself floating your knees to the earth. Feel here that you're gently pressing back from the mat's edge as if you were trying to push the mat away from you. Feel how your feet stretch. As the toes are tucked under, feel the curve of the kneecap. Good. You'll see where you are. I'm just scooching back on my mat a little bit. And then from this place, hands directly under your chest, melt your chest and your chin to the floor. And then notice here, again, the curve of the neck, the curve of the back, send the sit bones into the sky, and the arch of the feet. Take a deep breath in, and on your exhale, let your body start to melt into the earth. On your inhale, pull the mat under you to lift the heart. Unfold the feet. Slithering here into cobra. Take a deep breath in. Now let your chin remain in a place that feels more comfortable to you. It's really about trying to lift the heart. Rolling the pubic bone down into the floor. Pressing the tops of the feet into the earth. Sending their shoulders back, elbows are close together by your side, like grasshopper's wings. And then melt the body down. Tuck the toes under, take a deep breath in. On your exhale, press back into child's pose, yes, with the feet flexed under. And then send the hips to the sky. Finding your first down dog in today's practice, and go ahead and pedal the feet. I always like to call it milking the ankles, right? Get those feet moving. Happy feet mean happy hips. Take another deep breath in. Look at your hands. On your exhale, bend into the knees. Walk yourself forward. Hands behind your back. Finding that sacrum there, if you will. Inhale, halfway rise. And exhale, fold. Inhale, rise all the way up. And exhale, hands to heart center. We're going to go through that flow again. Inhale, rising up. Exhale, fold. Inhale, halfway rise. And exhale, folding the body, planting the hands into the earth. Bend the knees. Step the right foot back. Step the left foot back. Let the knees sink to the earth. Now allow the elbows to bend chest sinks to the earth, chin touches the earth. Send the sits bones higher. Keep the feet tucked under. Feel the arches of the neck, the low back, the knee, and the foot. Deep breath in, deep breath out. Slither through to cobra. Place the tops of the feet on the earth. Lift through the heart. And perhaps here, you can take your hands away pressing your palms towards the ceiling behind you. Deep breath in, deep breath out. Melting all 10 toes towards the floor. Pinky toe as heavy as the big toe, please. Another deep breath in, and melt the body to the earth. Bring the hands back to place themselves beside your shoulders or your chest wall. Take a deep breath in, 
Roll those toes under. You can come to child's pose, then down dog, or straight up and back to down dog. So for today, I'm not doing chaturanga because I'm really focusing on the back arches of the body. Taking another deep breath in, bend the knees, look at the hands before you, exhale, walk forward. Inhale, halfway rise. Perhaps your hands stay down if you can remember the sensation of finding those back arches. Exhale, fold. And inhale, come all the way up. And exhale, find your hands to heart center. Here again, sink heavy into the heels, spread the toes, take a deep breath in. And let it go. Inhale, placing the chest bone into the hands once more, finding that little bit of a back bend, perhaps pressing the hips forward, finding it even more. Maybe the chin lifts. If it doesn't feel good, keep it down. And exhale, fold. Inhale, halfway rise. And exhale, fold. Bending into the knees, step back through the right foot. Inhale, rising up into a lunge. <laughs> and stay here nice and steady. Taking a deep breath in and a deep breath out. From here, pivot around, finding your warrior two so that you are wide open in the hip. Finding a deep breath in and a deep breath out. Sink a little deeper into that front knee. Bring your elbow to meet the front elbow to the front knee. Good, and take your extended side angle pose. Now here, really think about pulling the pubic bone forward, tucking the tail under, opening up the front of the hips, feeling that line open. If it's in your practice, you can take the top hand, bring it around, the bind behind your back. And if you wanna go a little deeper, you can sink in and bind your bottom arm around your thigh. Wherever you are, come back up, meet me in warrior two. Take a deep breath in and a deep breath out. And wheel the hands back around to the floor, coming back into that lunge stance. We're gonna go right to the other side today. So take the left foot back to meet the right. Deep breath in here and then exhale, down dog. Finding a deep breath in, lift up through the heels, find your stilettos, place the heels back towards the earth. Inhale, look at the hands. Exhale, walk yourself forward. Stay ready for the other side. Inhale, halfway, rising up. Exhale, fold. Inhale, rise all the way. And exhale, hands to heart center. Pressing the chest into the thumbs, pressing the hips forward into the wall in front of you, if you will. Find that little back bend. Exhale, fold. Drawing the abdominals up and in as you do. Inhale, halfway rise. Exhale, fold. Go ahead and take the left foot back. We're gonna rise up into that lunge just where we are, finding the strength of that front leg. How are we doing out there? If you missed the Facebook Live, it's going on YouTube at the same time. So, on your next breath. Heard my hips pop. We're gonna open up those hips. Really feel the expanse of the front of the hip. This front thigh sink in there. Press the hands down towards the floor. Find the length of your head. Reaching towards the sky. And then from here, if it's in your practice, take it on down, front elbow to front knee. Reaching hand overhead, extended side angle pose. Taking another deep breath in and out. If it feels good to you, you can take that top hand and rotate it around and back, bending the elbow, sweeping your hand into your waist. The back of your palm will be touching your waist. You can remain here. If you'd like to go into the full bind, sink a little lower and take that arm under the thigh and bind. Nice deep breath in and out. Wherever you are, pin the wheel back up, 
warrior two. Take a good stabilizing breath here, no hurry. Then pinwheel it around, connect the hands to the earth, step the right foot back, find your down dog. Send those sits bones up to the sky, come up onto your stilettos, send the heels down, keep those sits bones to the sky, deep breath in, tuck those ribs in, push through right here, she's busting into that. <laughs> Take your inhale, looking forward and block it. Inhale, halfway rise and exhale, fold. Inhale, rise all the way up and exhale, hands to heart center. We're going to move on with some balance work. So I'd like you to find your block or your towel or your pillow, whatever works for you. Okay. And what we're going to do is set up for another sun citation, but with some chair and with some inner thigh power. So we just stretched it with warrior two, having the block nearby, you can place it between your thighs. Block's not available, take a pillow or fold a pillow, place it between your thighs. You can use a towel like so, or folding it a different way, you can actually get a little bit more stability, make it a little thicker and use a towel. So having said that, place those hands there, the thigh, the block between the thighs. And we're gonna give it a gentle squeeze coming back to the front of the mat. And now your feet have to be sits bones width apart if you're using the block, it's about the same. And just spread those toes again, finding Tadasana, lifting the heart, melting the shoulders, feeling the buoyancy of the head. Take a deep breath in and a deep breath out. Now we're going to merge the inner thigh work and the arches of the back together here as we bend the knees about 30 degrees. You're going to feel the stretch of the calf muscle. You should feel the arches of the foot lift as you plant the four corners of the foot into the mat. You're going to keep a natural lower curve and a lean forward of 30 degrees. And then as you look out beyond you, you're going to get just a slight curve in the cervical spine. Ungrip the toes, press instead into the toe bases. Make sure your ribs are connected to your core. Abdominals are hugging the spine with each breath, but not rigid, not tight. Fluid with the breath, breathing in and breathing out. Now, if you've been in my class, you know that I say often our shoulders, sometimes they just start to take too much attention. If that's the case, always pull your hands back into prayer and feel instead that attention return to the arches of your feet, the arch in the back of your knee, in the back of your lumbar spine there at the low waist and into your cervical neck and we're squeezing that block as we do it take a deep breath in and a deep breath out really sip up that air through the nose and if it feels better to you more relaxing and cooling to the body open your mouth and sigh that breath away and now everyone meet me up hands are reaching Exhale, forward fold, right over that block, pillow or towel, and inhale, halfway rise. Exhale, fold, inhale, come all the way up. We're going to repeat chair, hands come to heart center, but with a little bit of flair. You know, in my style, we can stay right where we just were, feet firmly planted. But if you'd like to, you're going to join me the next step. I'm going to turn slightly here so I can talk to you a little bit better, but spreading those toes, still squeezing that block. Take a deep breath in, press the heart, press the hips, find the back bend, maybe the chin lifts a little, and then exhale, fold. Inhale, halfway rise. I'm keeping my hands at heart center right now, really focusing on what's happening in that communication between the foot, the ankle, the back of the knee, the lumbar spine and the neck. I'm not letting my arms play right now. So this is my halfway rise, then exhale, we fold. And inhale, rise back up all the way. Sink into your 30 degree knee, squeeze. 
Find that lumbar spine neutral. Good. Lean about 30 degrees forward. And then look slightly up, like you're looking at the top of your door jamb, perhaps. Now find your dristi. And dristi means a focal point, an internal focus. So find a spot unmoving. And on that spot unmoving, remain with your gaze. Deepen into the knees. Shift slightly forward into the toes and lift the heels off of the earth. Now you have the arch of the foot, the arch of the knee, the arch of the low back, the arch of the cervical spine. And we remain with our breath. And if it feels too much, come back to your heels. Otherwise remain. Another deep breath in and a deep breath out. Standing all the way up, lower the heels if you haven't already. Take an inhale, a little mini back bend, exhale, fold, let the tension go. Let it melt off the top of your head. Inhale, halfway rise. Exhale, fold. And inhale, come all the way up. Exhale, hands to heart center. Take a moment here and breathe. Checking back in with the four points of your foot, big toe and little toe base, inside and outside rail of the heel. Feel that energy coming up through your legs. The arch lifted in the foot. I'm feeling that slight engagement through the hips. And the movement of the breath. The buoyancy of the head and let your hands drift down. So from here we're going to make our way onto the floor. Keep your block, pillow, or towel handy. If you have a block you're just going to set it down like so in the middle of your mat. If you're using a pillow, set it in the middle of your mat. And if you're using a towel you want to make sure it's not too rolly at this point. And you're just going to want to kind of fold it up in a square and then a rectangle, making your own little makeshift block. And then you're going to sit on it. I'm going to sit on it and we're going to let the knees fall out to the sides. And then we're going to, in fact, even take the feet to be in front of us. All right. So sitting nice and tall, what I like here about the block is body can ask if you done on the floor, but what I like here is you can really start to feel the rudder of your tailbone. So I like to sit up tall and almost stick my tailbone out a little bit further, like I'm sticking my tail feathers out or my bee stinger. And then here your knees can just be really open, right? There's no restriction as much as sitting on the floor. And then I want you to lift your heart slightly and then look slightly up. We're going to change all of this once we've removed the block, but for now, let's just be here. Take a deep breath in and a deep breath out. Now as you feel the strength of your spinal column and that naughty of uh, feminine power, if you will, that fem feminine energy, um, it's just a really lovely feeling to feel that spine energize itself. Let the inner thighs relax, okay? They might wanna be holding some tension, just let them go. And another deep breath in and out here. Perhaps your eyes close, let you Focus on your breath. Another deep breath in and out. Let your eyes drift open. And now bring the right foot or your left foot, whichever one, just bring our foot in. So that the heel is a little bit more in line with your sits bone on the other side. And then you're going to place your ankle on top of the other knee here. And we're still elevated, okay? So we'll, we'll practice this again once we're on the floor, but it allows us to open up different angles of the hips. And so here we're gonna remain upright, no bend over, just upright and really trying to encourage the inner thighs and the hip rotators to open. Think of that lotus blossom that is always present in yoga practices and in all things that you see associated to yoga, the lotus here, top of the head, but each chakra represented by a different type of lotus, if you will. 
And then when you're ready, you're going to take that foot away. Just give it some space. Transition yourself. And if you've been stuck Netflix binging, this might be a transition, might be part of your work. And then again, we're trying to line up ankle with knee, ankle with knee. You may find that one hip is more cooperative than the other. And just use that not to judge your body, but to allow yourself to be a student of your body, which side might need more attention. Maybe you need to change a sleeping pattern a little bit. Do some stretches while you're watching Netflix. Just continue to breathe here. The hips as we start to open them, especially in the next few uh, sessions as I keep working through this series I've been teaching on, we're going to get into some hip openers. They tend to rebel a little bit. Um, it's a vulnerable place in the body. So really focus on directing your breath to the hip. And now from here, taking that away, rolling yourself off of whichever prop you've decided to use. You're then going to come back into Baddha Konasana, so soles of the feet together, footprint to footprint. And I like to pull my feet really close and I get my knees really wide. But if that's not available to you, you can most certainly come out here a little bit more in a diamond shape. In fact, I encourage everyone to meet me here for a second. So I find that those of us who were dancers and things like that, it's really easy to get into one shape, but then when we change the angle of our hip, it's like, oh, that's a whole new playing field. So come out so that it looks a little bit more like a diamond between your pubic bone and your heels. Footprints are still touching. And now hold on to the tops of those feet, lengthen the back arches. So feel the lumbar spine, feel the cervical spine. Start to do a little arm curl here to pull your chest towards. So I'm not hunching over like I'm trying to retreat into my turtle shell. In fact, I want you to think like a turtle poking its head out of the shell. Pull yourself in. And so if you're used to the other angle, this one might feel like some work. And we're going to breathe here. And the belly's a little bit more constricted in this space, but I don't mind that because that means we can really direct our inhale into the back ribs. And feel that expansion in that deep part of the lungs. So I want you to just send some beautiful thoughts to your lungs right now. Maybe you even take that beyond your own lungs, but to the lungs of your friends and family. Just breathe in beautiful color. That's Green would be good. And as you exhale, I just want you to think of sending out any gray, any anxiety, any fear, disease. So breathe in the green, bring in the life, and exhale the gray. And then you're going to make your way up, and we're going to continue breathing, but we're going to change our angle. So bring those feet as close as possible that your body allows you um, to access. And then we're going to read a book together. So I want you to take your thumbs, place them inside of your toe bases. And this is a little trick I learned from my fellow teacher and friend Jocelyn, uh, who was one of the first people that helped me to fall in love with yoga. Um, because I would always do the little butterfly thing and hold onto my feet and clench. And she was like, let's read a book. So thumbs go into the toe bases. Knees are wide and relaxed, thighs are relaxed. Shake them out a little bit, sit up nice and tall. And now open your book. You should be able to see the arches of your feet. And this again is opening up this beautiful energetic line that goes from the arch of the foot up through the inner thighs, right into the diaphragm of the pelvis, the pelvic floor muscles. So I just want you to breathe here. And if it feels accessible, if it feels good, you can start to, once again, take your head out of your turtle shell. And maybe your elbows can connect, but I would like you to refrain from forcing it. Okay? I want you to get clenchy and mm, just stay open, stay relaxed. You're reading your book, you can see your arches, and you let those elbows just kind of sink in. And keep sending your head out of your turtle shell and keep sending that green 
into the depths of your lungs, that life-giving breath, and as you exhale, you're singing out all of the gray. Take another deep breath in here, and a deep breath out. Inhale, rise all the way up. Let your legs relax however they see fit. You're going to make your way into Shavasana with any of these little bolsters. Um, a block or a pillow can go under your head if you tend to find that your neck or your rib cage seems very tight when you lie down flat on your back. So it'll just help bring some tension out. I'll show you quickly and then I'll have to leave you because of the time span of filming. But some people when they lie down flat, those ribs really flare up and they seem really tight in their chest and their chin. So if you sit the block, pillow, or towel under the nape of your neck there, the base of your skull, all of that will settle down and will allow your body to relax. For others of you, when you lie down, it's not your head and your chest that give you a lot of issues. Sometimes it's your lower back, your sacrum. You feel this pressure right under at the base of your pants line or right there in between your glutes. So in that case, um, you can bend your knees and let your knees touch and let your feet be as wide as your mat. That will take a lot of the pressure off. Or you can set a block under your knees like so and just have your feet together. Same thing with a pillow or with your little towel. But you're going to make your way into Shavasana. And I'll talk you into it. And just get yourself settled, get all your wiggles out. And then from there, you will allow your eyes to drift closed and you're going to let your body relax. And at this point, once you've done that, I ask you to just stay for a few minutes and let your eyes close and continue to think about breathing in green, breathing in light and exhaling gray. And your thoughts will scatter, your thoughts will go off to other things, but just come back to the breath and just be there until your body says, I am rested. And this is sealed and complete, all right? I'm leaving you at this point, but you stay with yourself there in Shavasana. Have a beautiful day.